Welcome, friends, to Word Addiction 2023. This is your host, Reverend Lawrence Makombe from Lifeful Chapel Kitengala, the House of Faith. I'm glad and excited that this is the day that the Lord has made for us to look and meditate in His Word and to get what He has in store for us. I want to believe that the Lord is going to speak to you, is going to encourage you, is going to uh, you know redirect you, and you're going just to get more knowledge in God's Word that you can be able to apply to make sure that your life takes a trajectory that the Lord intends for it. And so today we are going to look at Numbers chapter number 14 and chapter number 15, and I believe that by gra God's grace, you will be able to go home with something in your heart. Remember, if this program has been a blessing to you, I welcome you to tell, uh, no, to tell your friends, to tell a friend, to tell a friend that there is something cooking at the media. And you know, as you look into God's word, I believe that your life will never be the same again. God's word is his covenant to mankind. And as you do what the word instructs you to do, then God will perform what he has covenanted in his word to perform uh, for the sake of your life. And so I want to tell you, please, again, share this widely. Follow us on our Facebook page, on our, on our YouTube page. Like it, you know, share these things. Let them also be a blessing to somebody else. And I believe that the Lord will richly, richly bless you uh, for that. So today we are looking at uh, Numbers chapter number 14 and chapters number 15. So why don't we begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and all the praise that is due to your name. We thank you for this is the day that you have made and indeed we shall rejoice and be glad in it. For God, there is something that you have kept in store for us today. As we spend this time in your presence, oh God, we want to declare it is not in vain. You're going to instruct someone, you're going to uplift someone, you're going to rebuke someone, you're going to strengthen someone, oh God, just for the glory and the honor of your name. I want to pray that today somebody's destiny is going to take a different trajectory, oh God, for the glory and the honor of your holy name. Lord, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will be present with us as we look and dive into your word today. We give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We do trust, praying, and believing. Yesterday we looked at um, uh, chapters number 10, or uh, chapters number 11, sorry, all through to chapter number 13. And we saw how the children of Israel were grumbling and complaining before Moses and the Lord, and how the Lord consumed them with fire. And we said a grumbling spirit does not delight the Lord, displeases the Lord. And so we need to cultivate a culture in our hearts, in our lives, a culture that, that is focused on thanksgiving, praise, being thankful always in your life, so that this thing that we do before the presence of God shall be pleasing to Him. Every time we grumble, every time we complain, we push away the presence of God. And there are many people who cut off or shot their destiny just for the fact that they were complainers before the living God. Complaining means that you don't trust God. Complaining means that you're not satisfied with what God has done in your life. Complaining means that you have found familiarity with the presence of God. Whenever you complain, you're trying to say to God, you have not done enough. And that's why even when Moses told God, God, you're saying that you're going to feed this multitude? The last time we counted me and you, we gave you an accountability report of 600,000 men on food. And you want to say that you shall supply meat for them for an entire year? God, you're kidding. Even the flocks that you have can't support your idea. And then the Lord told Moses, as the arm of the Lord becomes shortened, Whenever you complain and doubt God, you're telling God your hand is not long enough or strong enough or big enough to supply what you've promised. And God told Moses, stay aside and you will see. And for indeed, the Lord supplied 
to them. And so today, we look at Numbers chapter number 14, uh, verses number 1. So the Bible says, So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. Why did they weep? Because God seemed to be giving them a, an, an unrealistic assignment to get into a land that, yes, it flows with milk and honey. But remember they said that land devours its own people. That land, it's a land that is so big that has got fortified cities. That land has got the sons of the Anakim or the sons of Enak there. And it was like impossible to get to that land and you know, possess what the Lord had told them to go and possess. So this time, the all congregation lifting up their voices and crying day and night. That all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the all congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. Or if only we had died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land? To fall by the sword that our wives and the children should become victims. Would it not have been better for us to return all the way to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select another leader and return to Egypt. Wow. They look at the distress, the mountains and difficulties and obstacles that come before them. And their destiny. They say even though this promise is a good promise. Even though the land is what the Lord described for us. It flows with milk and honey. But the obstacles that they are going to face. These obstacles are going to turn our children to be fatherless. And our women to be widows. It would have been better for us to die in, in Egypt. Or even in the wilderness. And they said ah. Let us now look for another leader who will return us back to slavery because that's what Egypt is like. Now the God-ordained leader is not good enough for them. They want to choose a leader that fits their need. Let me tell you, any leader that does not stretch your faith to trust and to believe in God is not your God-given leader. Every leader that God brings in your life is like a coach. You know, your coach is not your friend. Your leader is not a friend. That's why uh, 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 a lot of people who are led by friendly people don't go far. Number one, spirit of familiarity gets in. Number two, your friend will not stretch you as much as a coach or a leader or a mentor. You see, the work of a God-given leader is to stretch your faith, to stretch you, expand your attitude and larger uh, your attitude and larger your dream life. Show you how to use your tongue to gain access to what God has made 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 uh, available for you. Your leader, your coach, is never comfortable with your presence. He wants you to pursue your future, your ideal self, the ideal that. God wants you to become. That's what a leader is for. That is what a coach is for. So for them, they needed a leader who was to make them comfortable and lead them back to captivity, lead them back to a place of oppression and depression, to a place of turmoil, toil, and tears. But they didn't need Moses who was giving them access to God's promises the promises that he gave to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a land that they have seen and testified that it flows with milk and honey. They are saying, no, Moses, you are the wrong leader. I wish it was possible that we died in Egypt or died in the wilderness. But concerning this land you're talking about, we are not ready to make our wives widows and our sons fatherless. So let us look for another leader who will make us comfortable in our oppression. Lead us back to oppression. Moses, you're stretching our faith too much. Could that be your conversations within yourself? 
or with the people around you, that you are always comfortable with a person who a leader who just makes you comfortable in the situation that you are in. No one is uh, not a leader who is stretching your faith, challenging your reasoning, making you a critical thinker, enlarging in your capacity to trust and believe God for the impossible. Telling you that the God that we serve is the God of all flesh and nothing is too hard for him. The kind of leader you choose to sit under determines your access to your destiny. For then, it's better not to enter to a God-given destiny but to go back to the hands of our oppressors. And the new Moses was not the guy to do that job. So let us look for another leader. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb, the sons of Jephunneh, who were amongst those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of all the children of Israel saying, the land we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. In other words, God has given us our best, his best. So the land is ex exceedingly good. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it and give it to us, uh, give it to us a land which flows with milk and honey, verse 9. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Amen. And the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of the Israel. Now here we see Joshua, the son of Nun, and a couple of people arise and say, Do you know what? God does not make mistakes. The land indeed is exceedingly flowing with milk and, and it is a good land for us. Are there obstacles? Yes. But guess what? They shall be to us as bread. In other words, we are going to chew them because their glory, their protection has already departed from them. So do not be afraid afraid of them. In short, God has already given us victory. Because when God has already given you the land, it means he has already taken care of how you will get into the possession of that land. Then as they are complaining and planning to storm these people, the glory of God falls to protect the ones who trust and believe in him, regardless of what the multitude Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe in me? With all the signs which I have performed amongst them, surely I will strike them and I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. In other words, God is saying, As these people, they have always been struggling and complaining against me. There are rebellious people. Now Moses, let me strike these people and I'll make now a nation out of yourself. God is wondering, all the signs I have done in your presence, if I was able to, to defeat the greatest nation in the known world then, Egypt. If I was able to bring Egypt to its knees with the signs and the wonders that I displayed for you, in short, why do you think these little giants that you have seen, I lack the capability to bring them down? But to the people of faith, they saw that the giants were big pieces of bread before them. But to those who are fearful, who don't have faith, the mountains seem bigger than they appear. And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear it. 
For by your might you brought these people up from them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, that, uh, the, the, uh, they have heard that you, Lord, are amongst these people. That you, Lord, are seen face to face and your cloud stands above them. And you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations will have heard of your fame, will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring these people to the land, which he sought to give them. Therefore, he killed them in the wilderness. And now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundful in mercy. Forgiving iniquities and transgression, but he by no means clear he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children of the third and the fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of these people. I pray according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgive, uh, just as you have forgiven these people from Egypt until now. The power of a leader is the power of intercession. So God tells Moses, Moses, do you know what? I can strip these people away and begin another nation with you. Then Moses comes and tells God, God, the people have heard what you've done in Egypt. The people have known that you lead us with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. They have known that your presence lives amongst your people. Yet, if you destroy them like just one man, they will say it is because you lacked the ability to bring the people into their promised land. Please, God, I beseech you. You are a God full of mercy. And you can forgive. Please forgive them. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. Wow. But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they suddenly shall not see the land of which I saw to their forefathers, nor shall any of these who have rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, underline that, because he has a different spirit in him, and has followed me fully, I will bring into, into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Now God tells Moses, listen, it is not the first time these people have been disobedient to me. They have looked down upon my word. Disobeying it, not one time, not two times, not three, not even five, but solid ten times. And he says, listen, these people, I swear, they will not enter their destiny. Though I wanted them to enter their destiny. But only Joshua and only Caleb, because he had a different spirit, he says, and he followed me fully or wholeheartedly. That's how you know you have a spirit that is different from the rest to complain. That you are given to entirely without any reservation to follow after your God. And that's why we say this is a way of kingdom addiction. Be willing to follow God like an addict. Do you know when an addict is, a person is addicted of alcohol, you tell them there is alcohol somewhere, even though they have just taken another pie, a paint somewhere, glass or a liter or a half, they'll still go there because they are addicted. They follow their alcohol fully. And as a believer, you ought to follow the dictates and the demands of the kingdom of God with all of your heart. 26. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, 
Just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The, ca the, carca the carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were, who were numbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above. You remember the statistics of 603,500 people? God says, your carcasses will remain in the wilderness. Except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, who shall by no means uh, who shall by no means enter the land which I saw. I will make you dwell. I will make you dwell in. But your little ones whom you said will be victims, I will bring in. And they shall know the Lord which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness. Now listen. These people disobey God because of their children. Yet God says, now because you've disobeyed me about your children, you will not enter the promised land. But the children who caused you to disobey me, they will enter into the promised land. According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do to you all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me in this wilderness, they shall be consumed and they shall die. There they shall die. And the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land, those very men who, brought, who, men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh remained alive of the men who went to spy out the land. So God has already begun his judgment with the people who caused the nation of Israel to complain against him. But he preserves the people who are obedient. One is Caleb, a man of a different kind of spirit, and Joshua, a man who is to inherit or to succeed a Moses as the leader of the children of Israel. Then Moses told these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they arose early in the morning and went up to the top of the mountain, saying, Here we are, and we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Now why do you transgress the command of the Lord? For this will not succeed. Do not go up lest you be defeated by your enemies, for the Lord is not amongst you. In other words, you have disobeyed. And because of your disobedience, the presence of God will not accompany you in battle. Hmm. But they presume to go up the mountain, disobedient people, to the mountain top. Nevertheless, neither the ark of the covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in that mountain came down and attacked them and drove them back as far as Hormah. 15 verses 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have come into the land you are to inherit, which I am giving to you, and you make an offering by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering or a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a free willing offering or in your appointed feast to make a sweet aroma to the Lord from the heart of the flock. Then he who presents its offering to the Lord shall bring a grain offering of one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one-tenth of a hin of oil and one-fourth of a hin of, a wine, of wine as a drink offering. You shall prepare with the burnt offering or the sacrifice of each lamb. Or for a ram, you shall prepare as a sign, as a, 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 prepare as a grain offering, two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one-third of a hin of oil. And as a drink offering, you shall offer one-third of a hin of wine as a sweet aroma to the Lord. And when you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or the sacrifice to fulfill a vow, or as a peace offering to the Lord, then shall be offered with the young bull a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a thin of oil. 
and you shall bring as the drink offering half a fine of wine as an offering made by fire a sweet aroma unto the Lord. Thus it shall be done for each young bull, for each ram, for each lamb or young goat, according to the number that you prepare. So you shall do with everyone according to their number. All who are native born shall do these things in this manner in presenting an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. And if a stranger dwells with you or whoever is amongst you throughout your generations and would present an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord, just as you do, so shall he do. One ordinance shall be for you as the assembly and for the stranger who dwells with you, an ordinance forever throughout your generations. As you are, so shall the stranger be for, so, uh, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. On law and on one, one law and one custom shall be for you and for the stranger who dwells with you. So the sacrifices, the offerings, the free will offerings that the children of Israel shall bring before the presence of God. It gives an instruction and we read it, we read it so much. And we're looking uh, a few weeks ago uh, uh, at the book of Leviticus. So the Lord tells uh, Moses here, this law shall apply both for you who is a, ch a child of Israel and even to the person who lives amongst you and they're a stranger or a foreigner. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you came into the land of Egypt, which I bring you, then it will be when you eat of the bread of the land that you shall offer up a heave offering to the Lord. You shall offer up a cake, a cake of the first of your young ground meal as a heave offering, as a heave offering of the threshing floor. So shall you offer it up. Of the first of the ground meal, you shall give to the Lord a heave offering throughout your generation. Verses number 22. If you sin unintentionally and do not observe all these commandments which the Lord has spoken to Moses, all the Lord has commanded you by the hand of Moses from the day, from the day the Lord gave commandment and honor throughout your generation, then it will be if it is unintentionally committed without the knowledge of the congregation that the whole congregation shall offer one young bull as a burnt offering, as a sweet aroma to the Lord which its grain offering and its drink offering according to the ordinance and one kid of the goats as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for the whole congregation of the children of Israel and it shall be forgiven them for it was an intentional. They shall bring their offerings. Uh, they shall bring their offering, offering made by fire to the Lord and their sin offering before the Lord for their unintended sin. It shall be forgiven the whole congregation of the children of Israel, the stranger who dwells amongst them, because all the people did it how? Unintentionally. And if a person sins unintentionally, then he shall bring a female goat in its first year as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for the person who sins unintentionally when he sins unintentionally before the Lord, to make atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. You shall have one law for him who sins unintentionally, for him who is native born amongst the children of Israel, and for the stranger who dwells amongst you. But the person who does anything presumptuously, where he is, he is net, whether he is a native born or a stranger, that one brings reproach on the Lord, and he shall be cut off from amongst his people. Because he has, he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his, cover, his commandment that persons shall be completely cut off, his guilt shall be upon him. So a person who sins intentionally is to be cut off from the children of Israel. 32. Now while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron. And all the congregation, they put him under guard 
because it had, it had not been explained what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man must surely be put to death, or the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. Verses 37. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. Tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and to put a blue thread in the tassels of the corners, and you shall have the tassel that you may look that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do and, and, and do them, and that you may not follow the hollow tree of which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined, and that you may remember and do all my commandments and to be holy for your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Praise be the name of the living God. So here God tells them when somebody was caught, you know, disobeying the law of the Lord in terms of working on it was Sabbath. He said, let the entire congregation stone him to death because of his disobedience. And then he tells them, Go, make a garment with tassels and a blue, and, and a blue uh, a linen. And this actually is what they use in prayer. And he tells them, let it be a reminder to you that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. This is what uh, people in, the, in Israel use it to pray. It's like a prayer cloth to them. And you know, Whenever you get into God's presence in praying, he reminds you or you get reminded of the things that he has already done for you. It's always when you get to prayer and you've got a grateful heart before God, it's like he reminds you of all the things that he has done in your life. For what reason? So that you Faith can continue to grow in him. To know that your next request, God shall meet it. Whenever you get into a mood of prayer, always go, let praise and thanksgiving go ahead of you. Every single day of your life. Let thanksgiving and praise go before you. Every time you enter into God's presence, let him remind you that he's the Lord God, your God, and what he has performed in your life in your life. Praise be the name of the living God. Amen. So we've come to the end of our reading today. Tomorrow we kick off from uh, Numbers chapter number 16 and uh, 17. So go and read these chapters. Let the Lord speak to you in a dearly manner. Let him encourage you. Let him encourage you. Do not let people around you make you disobey God. Don't even let your children make you disobey God. Because God told them, now these children that have made you disobey me by saying that they will be fatherless, these children will enter the promised land, but not you. Don't make that mistake. Fight with God. Fight for God. Make sure that your heart is righteous and right before him. In all your undertakings, let the Lord go in front of you. Amen. And so if you want to uh, give us feedback on this program, use the numbers that are appearing there on your screen. If you want to be a partner, you can use the same. If you want to give today, and I encourage you to do so as a partner with us, Use the till number that is appearing right now on your screen, 9527 Mpesa by Goods and Services, till number 952737. And I believe the blessings of a giver shall follow you all the days of your life. Amen. Why don't you pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. And we honor you. Lord, some of us have been disobedient to the heavenly vision that you've called and given to us. So, Father, I pray for that sister, for that brother who's watching me today, that they shall be obedient to your call, to your dictates, to your demands, to your word. 
that father you may be able to manifest yourself upon their lives for the glory and the honor of your holy name grant them the ability to obey you every single day of their lives in jesus mighty name we do trust praying and believing amen see you tomorrow same time same place in jesus name